It's time for a new era in sport. One that honors the brave. We wanted to create a space for them where they could come and feel comfortable. The bold. He really opened my eyes to having black people obviously in hockey and playing with them. The people that look different. I'm gonna get in the sled and see how far it goes. Blind hockey not just changed my life, in many ways saved it. This is a 12-part series about individuals and organizations who are determined to redefine hockey culture and to inspire a new and diverse generation of hockey fans. One day there's going to be a little eight-year-old boy who's going to look at the eight-year-old girl and say, you can play professional hockey too. Woo! Let's go, ladies! My name is Soroy Tinker. I'm a professional hockey player and philanthropist. And this is Breaking Down Barriers. Brought to you in part by Canadian Tire, proud sponsor of Breaking Down Barriers. During season one of Breaking Down Barriers, we had the opportunity to meet and tell the stories of individuals and organizations devoted to changing hockey culture. People determined to make Canada's game truly a game for everyone. In this episode, we will look back at season one and highlight moments that celebrate the progress that is being made by the brave trailblazers we have had the privilege of working with. In the summer of 2021, Nashville Predators prospect Luke Prokop made history by becoming the first openly gay player under an NHL contract. He has bravely become a role model within the sport, determined to make hockey a more inclusive space for everyone. <laughs> You can't do that. It's illegal. Come on, hide. No. What time do you guys usually get here? Before the game? Two and a half hours. Before. Two and a half hours? Okay. Just have a sit in. Yeah, I was definitely nervous. No one had done it before, so we didn't know what type of reaction we were going to get. You know, one of my concerns as a, as a dad and, and somebody that's been around the game was, are you ever gonna get the opportunity to follow your dreams if you do this? You know, are you gonna be treated equally? Are you gonna be passed over for certain teams or certain opportunities because, because of your sexuality? And he was very adamant that, that his journey was far beyond hockey for him. It's a life journey and, and what he can do to, to help other people. I knew that was something I wanted to do was come out publicly. You know, seeing as there's not been a role model like me uh, in the game, that was really hard for me growing up and I wanted to be that for, for some little kids growing up. Bravest thing I've ever seen somebody do. And at the end of the day, he's just another guy who plays hockey, just another teammate. Oh, see you later. Oh, no, see you later. See you later. See you later. Oh, no, see you. You know, his sexuality doesn't define him in the least. I think Luke should be remembered as a pioneer, as a trailblazer, as a person who took a stance and uh, was unafraid and he'll be remembered for decades and decades and decades. I wanted to have a lasting impact on the game of hockey outside of the rink, and championships are awesome, but an impact lasts forever, and that was something that I was striving for, and um, you know, that's something, something I, I think I did that was truly special, and again, I, I have no regrets coming out um, with my personal life, with my hockey life, and being able to help so many others out there as well. At the start, I lost a lot of weight. I wasn't strong. I was pretty beat up. So doing simple things like moving my body or, you know, changing myself, putting socks on, was frustrating because I could barely do it at the time. Obviously, you just went from being a high-level athlete to now being able to not barely even change yourself. So 
that was probably the men biggest mental hurdle for me, um, feeling incapable of doing the smallest things. Asked my dad about the Team Canada, you know, setting the bar high for myself to set goals and work towards something because that's all I've done my whole life. You know, once he'd said I was eligible to play, I was like, oh, okay. And I just wanted to see where I could take it. I'll go high. Okay, go for it. Up, up, up. Hockey taught me so much. It's been my whole life, it's my identity. And obviously I couldn't play stand-up hockey with the injuries that I had. So I was like, okay, as soon as I'm healed enough, I'm gonna get in the sled and see how far it goes. And I've never seen somebody take to it like Ryan did. I mean, I think, you know, the accident happened in April. I'm gonna say it was it was late June, early July, and I had him out in a sled for the first time. And for somebody with a you know a spinal cord injury like that, for him to be out in a sled that quick was just uh, yeah, unheard of. Every day, you know, he's first guy on the ice, he's last guy off. After everything he's been through, he still has that love for hockey and that passion for sports. For me, just playing sled hockey is one of the hardest things that I had to start. First time I raised the puck today. But I eventually got it and it's growing the game. It's uh, making it more accessible, letting people know that, you know, again, the road's never over. There's always opportunity. This segment is brought to you by Canadian Tire. We are as close as we've ever been. Billie Jean King, the iconic tennis player, said that you believe you can be it if you see it. And that's why representation is so important. As we talk about you know, the process of change, that we understand that it's very easy to say we want to change. It's a very different matter when you talk about what does it take to change. Progress is being made for women's equality in hockey in all realms of the game. A new professional women's hockey league is set to launch next year. And at the same time, women have started to break hockey's glass ceiling, emerging as NHL executives, management, and rising through the officiating and coaching ranks. I think the first few months of living here, I. I had multiple times where I, I felt like I was pitching myself, just catching myself driving to the rink. And to live here because of hockey for me is so foreign, but it, it makes it that much more fun and part of the adventure and journey that I'm on right now. So we just need to be tight with our support. Jimmy underneath, you need to be really tight here so this can be a short pass. We can get possession with it. Just look to find the shooter. Okay, hey, stay inside, stay inside so we can find this ice right here. Now you're the shooter, good. Get off the wall, get off the wall. Coaching in the NHL is obviously my ultimate goal and it's what I do every day is to prepare myself to be a better coach and to continue to have that growth mindset to become a coach at that caliber. Okay, I want you to collect, protect the puck and then find X2 in the F3 spots. Same drill we know. If you hear a whistle, these boards are gonna turn back, pick up their F3. What drew me to, to Jessica as a coach is like she's uh, she's passionate. Come on, folks. Twelve more. Twelve more. Twelve for twelve. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Max. Lead the way. By hiring Jess, it's proof that you know anybody can do that. Space, space. Yeah. Good. Nice. Folks. Doesn't matter where you're from or who you are or or if you're male or female. Oh, that's our uh, first draft at the uh, Space Needle, all of our scouts. And it was a remote draft and we didn't have this building yet. So we, we got to do it at the Space Needle, which was fun. She sits at that table, the scouts listen to her. It's a beautiful thing when you see it, 
there can be no greater story about the success of diversity than Alex coming here and now becoming an assistant general manager and the impact she's had. I always try to be cognizant of is that anyone's biases are because in a lot of cases, these people have never worked with a woman before, right? Which is a lot of pressure because you're kind of setting the tone and setting the precedent for kind of their future interactions with women. Okay, keep set, six down, Toronto first. Okay, Toronto, checkers. In the 2021 season, I became the first female to be a lines person in the OHL and the AHL. Good! And you know, like the NHL one day, and without a doubt, a goal of mine, eventually. That's the big thing that, that I get is people ask, oh, like, do you ever think it's possible for a female to break up a fight between two professional male athletes? Like, it's a tactic. It's, a, it's the way that you do it. You wait for them to stop fighting and then you go in and you wait for them to, you know, stop seeing red before you try and make a move. I am a firm believer that if you're the best at your job and you're doing it to the best of your ability, then you should have equal opportunity, regardless of gender. I see in the near future, getting to the NHL. You need athletes on the ice that can skate at a high level, and that's men and women. My hope is that my story will continue to inspire, you know, young kids, boys and girls, to know that whatever barriers are in front of them, that they're invisible. Well, that spot on the wall, and then they just... Really anything is possible. I think it's our job in these positions to open the minds of everyone else in the industry, whether that's, you know, people in management and other teams, making sure that they are open to also breaking down the barriers, being allies to women. Being a part of something bigger than myself is, is really what what's matters here for me. Good. So if one day girls can look up at the NHL level and see females there and say, hey, you know, that could be me one day. That's what we're trying to do here as a collective. And it's just giving them the, the possibility that that's an opportunity. During season one of Breaking Down Barriers, we had the opportunity to tell the stories of individuals devoted to making the sport of hockey accessible to all children. I don't give choices to players when it comes to jerseys, but because you keep coming back, I'm gonna give you a gold jersey, okay? Yeah. Wayne Simmons, look. That's my old number. Number seven. Oh, it's your old number? I got lucky, right? Uh, number. Your socks, okay? Okay, so he's going to speed. Use medium. Honestly, I never thought it would have been suited up for hockey altogether because I know I couldn't afford it. Yeah, you can do it. We'll work it out. But like, you know what? We work it out. We just want to make sure the kids play. So he's also Rangers. And just right off the bat, I just told him exactly how it is because I can't. My son would love to play, but I cannot afford it. And then once I get the new stuff in, we'll change this for him next season, okay? This way he can get rolling. Okay, so that fits. He's got his own gloves, right? He doesn't have gloves. Merry Christmas. There's your gloves. That's a glove. There's your gloves. Mr. Brooks was like, don't worry about that. And listen, next week when we play our first full ice game, I don't want nobody getting around you. You wear number 76, so you have to make 76 proud. And in the first round of the NHL draft, we, right, the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Pick Jonathan Stewart. And don't forget, you're like this, watch. Look, 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 you gotta look. Right? Yeah. Seaside is a recognized Hockey Canada organization. We subsidize 60% of the kids. What do you say? Thank you. We offer house league and select. Come on, Jojo, let's go. Come on, Rayon, faster, come on, man. Way to go, Lennox. It is a diversity and inclusion program targeting kids that have never played before. Let's go! What I'm teaching this younger group is that nobody can dictate the arenas in which they operate and how they operate. You know, nobody can do that. Hey, the count of three, seaside. One, two, three, seaside! All right, let's go.
rain or snow, we go on the bus. Nobody can say you can't do this or you can't do that. You get to decide on, on what that is. I started realizing that there were no programs for young people who were blind or partially sighted to try the game. I realized that not only was there something that we need to do about this, this is Canada, this is hockey, it shouldn't matter how much sight you have, you should be able to play. But I also had this feeling inside of me and this spark saying, did this happen to you for a reason? So for a regular goalies, they use their eyes. My eyes are my ears. He shoots, he scores! With the game winning goal in overtime. You like the hockey? It feels like in, in your safe place. Last one, and then the last one. Yeah. Then you're good to go. And it's holy. And it's a relief feeling. It's a relief feeling knowing that he has his place. He has where to go. I don't know. It's it's just a relief. Rebound, rebound. Woo! We're gonna break every barrier on its way to prove that blind hockey is a sport. His vision won't stop him from doing anything. Another thing of hockey is I took a picture with Mitch Marner and we got to play with him, play a few games with him, and it was quite nice. Yeah. Just because I've seen it happen, I experienced a child who thought he would never get to play hockey. You know, weeks later, being in a dressing room before uh, a game, getting a pep talk from a coach. Nice try, nice try. I've seen someone who just lost their sight, the throwing in the towel on competitive sport, you know, weeks later, starting at center, playing the game of their life. You're starting to get, come together as a team. Good job, yeah. and To see the little wins, the first goal, or even the first shift, I mean, it, it has a lasting impression, that's for sure. I've been coaching for a long time and you know sometimes you see our indigenous kids get put to periphery. Well they'll just use racism to try to beat and knock you down. A lot of these kids have gone through it, I've gone through it. We wanted to create a space for them where they could come and feel comfortable. I've never had the chance to you know smudge in a locker room or you know, have an elder come into my hockey team and, you know, talk to myself and my teammates. I watched you play before when, I, when we were down in Victoria. And you guys are good, man. You're a good hockey team. You know, pray for us and give us strength, you know, to, to believe in ourselves and one another. You know, sometimes when you are on a team by yourself, it could be intimidating. Um, you know, you could have a sense that you don't belong. You're doing the little things. We're getting in lanes. We're willing to uh, put the team in front of yourself. And I think that these kids have a good chance to you know, ease themselves into the sport and the world to where they can you know, be confident and believe what they're doing is the right thing you know, and to have their culture come along with them. I think that's a very special thing to have. Four lines, get behind the coaches, even them out. Ethan, I am a role model to him. He, he's a role model to me. He has achieved great things, but also understands the importance of giving back. I think when he does this hockey academy, like how lucky these kids are to have somebody like Courage in their corner and you know help guide them. <laughs> okay, we'll figure out what we do this afternoon. Hit the next session you have. Go to the dry land. Good job today.
Our longest trip of the season was to the Arctic. Over the course of two days and four flights, we traveled from Toronto to Kugarik Nunavut to meet the Kugarik Dynamite girls hockey team. The first girls hockey program in the community in over 30 years. I got an email from this Emma Connell in Kugarik and said, well, there is no girls hockey. The men get all the equipment. And that broke Emma's heart and mine. So we sent 25 complete sets of everything they could possibly need in each bag and sticks and everything for the girls. Well, she just was ecstatic. But she said, that's incredible. You can't be serious. I said, yes, we are. And when do you want it? She said, how soon? So we put it together so they could have it before Christmas. On the first day they put their gear on, they all unpacked it over at the hall and they all tried it on so we could like situate, like figure out who, what gear should go to who. And then we packed it all up again and walked straight over to the arena. We kind of just did a, just a skate for our first practice just so they could feel like what the gear was like to have on and like holding a stick in their hand. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Here you go. Just then you're going to have polar bear. It's a polar bear meat. Recently caught to cut today. She won't miss hockey. <laughs> she spends the whole day after school until 9, 10, 11 at night at the rink, seeing the girls priceless. Priceless. I was the most happiest when Emma accepted her on the ice. It made me so proud. <laughs> Sad to say we've had so many suicides in the north. It's because of that that I'm really, really happy for programs like that, is to prevent mental illness. And just to look back at the memories, it, it makes it more meaningful to live. They like, have fallen in love with the game. Like, they truly love it. Good save, Laura! It's phenomenal. Like, you can tell, you can tell what players have played since the program started three years ago. Shooting before the hash mark. So behind those hash marks, you're gonna shoot there, okay? Okay. It's been really cool to watch them progress. Heads up! Good work, girls! Every single player on the team is helping at home. They're looking after children, they're helping cook, they're helping clean up. They're helping their, it looks like their grandfathers, get fresh water or fix a sled. A few players on our team are mothers themselves. She, she loves playing with hockey, speaking of ball. I hope she's going to play when she gets older. Hockey for all should be hockey for all. And if it's Canada's game, everyone should be allowed to play. So to imagine th these girls and women in these far-reaching areas of Canada, I mean, it never even dawned on them that they could do this because they don't get the equipment. It's not offered, provided, or otherwise. So it's been a remarkable experience.